Hey everyone, it's JC. Let's take a look at my three favorite and essential tools for beautiful floral cards in this perfect pairing. One of the first crafty essentials that I'm going to share are the magnitude of blending brush options that Altenew offers. So starting from the left, I have the large ink blending tool. The wonderful thing about the large ink blending tool is that it contains an ergonomic handle and white bristles to show what color you have existing or how much ink you have on your bristles. Now I dedicate a brush to each color family so I don't clean mine as often. And that's what I have designated here for each color family is by labeling it with a colored dot. As for the small ink blending brush tools, if you're a frequent to my perfect pairing series, you'll see that I use these quite often as well, especially for layering flower sets. And these come in sets of four. So all I needed to do here was purchase two sets. And then I have one for each color family, a brown and a black. And again, I use these same colored dots to keep them organized because I don't clean them in between unless I absolutely have to. And then of course, this is the newest addition to the ink blending brush family are the detail blending brushes. Now you'll see the importance of each of these, but for now I'll say that these are great for stencils and in my perfect pairing before this one with getting the most out of your gradient card stocks is this is great for painting onto layered flowers to add just a little bit more dimension. My plan is to as well make a stock of these for each color family, a brown and a black, just like the rest of my ink blending tools. New for the July 2021 stamp release is Gardenia Duo. This is a 6x8 stamp set and the bundle that I have includes the die set as well as the mask stencil. And to complete this perfect pairing, I will bring back one of the older Build of Flowers, which is the Build of Flower Gardenia. And of course, like all Build of Flowers, it does include the coordinating die sets. And of course, since these are both Gardenia flowers, I know that they're going to coordinate beautifully together on my card front. So the first thing I have done is taken the three floral outline images in both Build of Flower Gardenia and Gardenia Duo and stamped them in Sand Dunes Crisp Dye Ink. This is from the Coffee Break family of inks. So I've aligned the most detail layer for Build a Flower Gardenia and then the detail layers to Gardenia Duo. And then I'm going to bring back Sand Dunes Crisp Dye Ink. And if you're a longtime watcher of the Perfect Pairings with Me series, uh, you'll see that I use this technique quite a lot, which is just partially inking up the stamp. In this case, I'm going to stamp where the center petals fall on the build a flower gardenia image. I'm just going to slide in a piece of paper just to make it slightly easier to see here that I've inked just this top portion here. And then I'm going to use my dedicated brown ink blending tool. This is the small version. And I'm going to lightly diffuse this ink layer. Once I feel I have that ink layer diffused, I'll bring it over to my project. and stamp it just for a light bit of dimension. Overall, I want the gardenia flowers to translate as their true selves. So this sort of felt velvety um, sort of finish and waxy appearance to the flowers. So if my crisp dye inks were my paint, then this would truly be my brush, the small ink blending tool. And I'm using it as a medium to sort of direct color exactly where I want it on my main image here. So I'm just going to make sure my paper is fully aligned and then transfer that ink to my gardenia image. I feel I can use a little bit more concentration in the center. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply another layer. And that is my inked gardenia flower. Just for ease, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this layer from my stamp positioning tool. And I'm going to repeat the same steps on the bottom flower. I want a little bit of shadow variety, so I'm taking Butternut from the uh, Fall Harvest family of crisp inks. And I'm just going to use this in addition to sand dunes on my project here. So I'm changing ink color families here, so I'm going to grab my yellow ink blending tool 
to diffuse this yellow layer. I do like the little touch of yellow to these Gardenia Duo images. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for the um, Build a Flower Gardenia image. Just add a touch of yellow to the center petals. And again, I'm diffusing this layer with my mini ink blending tools. And now I like the end results of this. It's sort of like a golden, hazy feel to the center of these flowers. I'm going to set aside my floral gardenia panel and work on the leaves for this bouquet. So I have the leaf outline images in my stamp positioning tool. I'm going to use Jet's Black Crisp Ink to stamp these outline images. And I'm not quite sure how many images I'm going to want on my card front. So I'm just going to stamp this series of images again on the same panel. So I'm going to start with the Build a Flower Gardenia first. So this is the most detailed layer for the leaves. And I'm going to use Evergreen from the Greenfields family of inks. And just as before, I'm going to partially ink up the image and diffuse the ink for even more dimension on this solid layer. And I'm using this diffused ink on both gardenia images. Then on the solid images, I'm using forest glades. On one of these leaf clusters, I will use just a little bit of Jet's Black just to further intensify the cluster. And of course, I have a black dedicated ink blending tool just for this purpose. And I like that variation. It just shows the true sort of deep emerald look and very shiny appearance that gardenia leaves are so known for. So the gardenia duo images don't have any coordinating layers to them, like the build a flower gardenia. So that's what the mask stencil is for. Aside from masking for one layer cards, or inking on top of other images. These open areas for the leaves make great positive space for um, ink blending. So I've temporarily taped down my working panel here with some washi tape, and then I'm going to align the opening in the stencil to the image I want to color. And then I will apply another piece of the washi tape. So I am going to end up using these small tools and the detail tools to color both of these leaves. I want the same sort of detail and texture that are in the Build a Flower Gardenia images to translate into the Gardenia Duo images. I like to start from lightest to darkest layers. So I'm going to start with frayed leaf first and just gently ink blend just as normal. I'm taking a little bit of ink and just with a light hand I'm going in a circular motion and diffusing this ink. You can see I've got a sort of smooth gradient from a more intense color here up to a lighter color, less saturated color. Then I'm going to deepen the base of the leaf with forest glades. Then I'm going to use the number seven detail blending brush and evergreen and add a little bit of ink to the perimeter of the image and just a little bit to the base as well, so that there is a highlight that runs towards the center of this leaf, and then the depth is captured in the perimeter of the leaf. Now, I've put a, just one piece of washi tape at the top here, just so I can check to see how I like the coloring of this image. So I like where that's going, I'm just gonna leave it. So those are my leaf images, fully colored and stenciled in some cases. I'm going to bring back my floral gardenia images and use the coordinating dies from both sets and cut them out. Now I've got all my floral elements arranged here on my craft mat, but one of the problems I run into, especially after working all day, is I just, I just happen to lose the dexterity and the ability to really fine tune the placement of my floral elements. So one of the things that's been a lifesaver for me lately is the alternate tweezers. And these help me plan exactly where I want floral elements to go on my card without accidentally bumping other elements. So for me, I now spend less time trying to fiddle 
and fix elements that accidentally move as I'm using my fingers to fine tune leaf placement in my bouquets. All right, so here's my final planned gardenia cluster, thanks to the Altenew tweezers. Now I can pick everybody up at the same time with a little bit of Glad press and seal wrap. This is a food saving item, sort of like cellophane or cling film, depending on where you're from and what you call it, that really creates a seal on like bowls and ceramics, but it's great for the craft room. And now, as you can see here, my bouquet still fits on an A2 panel, but I can pick everybody up and move it off to the side just for a moment. Now I've already added the sentiment onto a panel of spicy yogurt cardstock. That's a cardstock that you can get exclusively at Altenew. My background panel is glued down to my folded note card base. And then I can start the tedious process of gluing all of these images down to my background. In order to do that, I can flip this entire panel over of all my images, apply my liquid adhesive, press down to adhere the images that I applied glue onto, and then I can remove the press and seal. Now, I didn't apply adhesive to all the images because I want to showcase one more of my top crafty essentials which is the instant dimension foam tape. Now this roll is huge. It's about 12 by 12 inches on my Altenew craft mat and it is 33 meters. Now I don't know what that is in feet but um, if I can peel back the um, decorative cover here you can see that you get uh, quite a lot of this stuff. I this this foam will last me for quite a few floral cards and just to let you know this stuff is strong like um, even though the density so the density of this is not rigid it feels very much like craft foam but the adhesive on both sides of this once I remove the release paper is 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 pretty strong. I've stacked this foam tape before and it adheres really well to each other as well as onto paper so the instant dimension has become instantly one of my favorites. I was using um, cut pieces of craft foam before and it was just too tedious and now this has been a great solution for me to create efficiently. I don't have to spend as much time making a floral card anymore. So I applied instant dimension foam tape to the two flowers that I want in my foreground. I can remove that press and seal wrap and for areas that aren't quite dry yet, I can use my Altenew tweezers again to sort of fine tune the placement of all of my leaves. After cutting off the overhang of just the flowers on my bouquet, I'm going to add one last detail of course to this card. So after adding an array of black and white splatters with jet black and pure white ink sprays, that finishes my card with three of my crafty tools so far. So that's the tweezers, the array of ink blending tools, as well as the instant dimension foam tape for this meticulously placed ink blended dimensional floral bouquet. My series encourages you to shop your existing Altenew stash and rekindle their love with newer releases. Perfect Pairings with JC airs on the Altenew channel every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Perfect Pairing episode with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello there! Are you still looking for project ideas and card making inspirations? Well, if you are, look no further. We have tons here at the Altenew YouTube channel. You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that we do upload. To help keep your creative juices flowing, we have a couple more videos that you can watch here too. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye.